Hey everyone, it's me again. So my next trip starts again in uh, airport of Varna, Bulgaria. And uh, right now I'm heading to capital of Austria, Vienna. I'll have uh, around five hours um, till my next flight there. So I'm thinking maybe I'll just go to the city center for an hour, for an hour or two. Uh, we'll see. Let's go. time I'm planning to spend at least one hour in the city center uh, I just need to find a way to get there very quick so I finally made it to the city center of Vienna uh, there is this uh, fast train uh, that takes 16 minutes that takes you directly from the airport to the city center it costs like uh, 14 euros but if you take uh, a return ticket so you need to take both tickets to the city center and back it's gonna be like 24 euros so I have around an uh, hour and a half or around two hours to check around and back to the airport. Right house. Um, I'm gonna do quick snacks, feed myself croissant sandwiches with ham and cheese, and going back to city center, half an hour there, and back to the airport. Very nice. So it's 11 p.m. local time. I just landed to Sarajevo, Bosnia and Herzegovina. Uh, I have my hotel booked. It's about 10 minutes walking from the airport. So I'm gonna have some rest, have some free day tomorrow. And the game, national team of Ukraine and Bosnia and Herzegovina. It's gonna be on Thursday night. So even though my hotel is 10 minutes away, as you can see, there's no space. Oh, damn it. There is no space for pedestrians here. So on the other side, on this side, this is like I'm in the village. Pretty st okay, I will not comment it. Comment, if you want, you can comment. Quick check on the room. All the prices tomorrow. I mean, it's not five star hotel, but but it's okay, that's, that's okay. 
So a quick check on the breakfast, did some Chinese stuff, I don't know what it is. Good morning everyone, uh, good morning from Sarajevo, I uh, just checked out from my hotel, I'm gonna go to the city center, so about the prices, uh, the flight from Varna to Vienna and then to Sarajevo, uh, so two flights cost me around $150, they also give you a cup of water and a little chocolate, chocolate bar, uh, then I got a hotel near the, near the airport, uh, it cost me $40, including breakfast. I mean, I could have find, found something cheaper, but uh, it, it's like, the, it was the best option with the late arrival of the plane. Um, what else? The train cost, I, I guess I've told you, the train cost just uh, 24 euros from Vienna airport to the city center and back and probably that's it so let's so about the prices by the way uh the plane from varna to vienna and to sarajevo cost me around 150 dollars uh, the hotel that i got near the airport is 40 dollars including breakfast not the best option not the cheapest option in sarajevo but uh it was it was okay and then the flight from here to istanbul which I have on Friday afternoon at 60 euros. Um, and then I'll just take bus or, or another plane to Varna. Uh, also, I'll be going to Zenica for a football game of Ukraine national team. Uh, the ticket to Zenica for the bus uh, was around eight euros. So eight euros there and then eight euros coming back. Uh, what else? apartment i'll be checking in today it's also around 35 dollars something like that uh, and that's it so it's, it's pretty cheap in bosnia affordable so here we can see the reminder that actually there was olympic games winter olympic games uh, in sarajevo if i'm not mistaken 1984 i may be wrong correct me if i'm wrong it, that actually may be the only reminder of Olympic Games. I don't know, we'll see. So let me show you the really, really historical place. This is the bridge where the First World War started. The, the bridge where Prince Franz Ferdinand was killed. And after that, the First World War started. to do in Sarajevo, you can always feed the pigeons. This looks exactly like Turkey. So I got myself some traditional, I want to say Turkish, but it's probably Bosnian coffee.
So a quick check on the apartment. Okay, we got some kitchen over here. I don't think I'm gonna cook anything, but still. Bedroom. It's like 12, 13 minutes walking from the city center, from the old town, I mean. So it's like whole place I'm alone here. And there's a bathroom. So it's 2 p.m. local time. I still haven't eaten anything since uh, morning. Uh, I wanted to go to have some lunch, but I also want to go to, uh, I'm not sure how you call it in English, but it's like cable cars that uh, take you up to the mountains. And I checked the Google and Google says they're close uh, in, at 5 p.m. So I'm probably go there. Uh, I want to go up to the mountains and go down and then I'll just have some lunch. I'm a bit hungry, but uh, who cares? Okay, so probably God heard me that I'm hungry. And the thing that can take you up to the mountains is on general renovation until sometime in April. So uh, I'm not lucky today. But anyways, let me show you the view. So got some traditional Bosnian Balkan food. Uh, it should be something with meat and cheese and yogurt. So good. Very nice. It's a match day today. Uh, it's 11 a.m. I just checked out my apartment. Uh, today we are again lucky with the weather, sunny weather again. So I'm going to have some lunch, some breakfast. Actually, I didn't have anything yet. And at 2:30 p.m., uh, I have a bus from Sarajevo to Zenica. And yeah, one more thing: if you, if uh, any of you is going to Sarajevo one day or in Bosnia in general, just prepare yourself and get some cash because I've been to some restaurants and bars yesterday and I didn't find any place if the, where you can pay by cart. I don't, uh, I'm not talking about supermarkets, of course you can pay there, but in bars, uh, restaurants, cafes, cash only. So be prepared. Can we check on the breakfast? That's some eggs with uh, traditional meat and coffee. Total should be like around uh, five, six euros. So I've just met a few fans from Ukraine that came here to Bosnia for the game. And they are all going by, the, by train, which is in two hours. But as long as I have, I had uh, the bus booked uh, and I have one hour left. So I'll head now to the bus station. It shows uh, it's gonna take me like 50 minutes walking. Or maybe I'll take tram, tram, so let's see. So here's my bus, uh, still have around 25 minutes. I'm gonna wait. Salam, Salam, Omar. We're on the way. Yeah, we're on the way now. So I finally made it to Zenica. It took me around one hour uh, traveling by bus. Uh, 
pretty comfortable road so far in Bosnia. Uh, comfortable ride, uh, exactly one hour as promised. So I'm heading to my apartment to leave my bags. By the way, bus cost me eight euros, which is which is a okay price. I also met this guy from Boston, Massachusetts. We had a nice talk for an hour, so it, the time went pretty quickly. Let's go. I just ordered some food, some pliskavica with bread and lemonade. <laughs> I'm right here with Michael. Hey, Michael. Hi. So the, this guy is going to almost every single Ukrainian game, is it, is it right? Yeah. How many games did you did you visit for last year? Last year I did nine games, so I did the golden season. Oh, um, really? So yeah, every single game last season, following on to this season. Um, so yeah, I basically started going regularly at the end of 2022. Before that, it was it was every now and then. Um, and since then, I got a bit of the buzz. And uh, yeah, I haven't missed a game since. So Very nice. So you're originally from great UK, right? Yes, yeah, so I'm from UK. My uh, grandparents from my dad's side are Ukrainian. So I've followed the Ukrainian national team through my heritage. And uh, so basically, yeah, so my grandfather died in 1992. And me and my father have kept traditions up together in the UK. And that's how we've followed the national team. Okay, and last question. Do you support any local club in UK or... Yeah, so I spot Bradford City in uh, the UK who are shit at the minute. <laughs> Can I swear? What? Can I swear? Yeah, sure. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah, the Bradford City are terrible at the minute. And uh, yeah, but hopefully if we get some new owners, if they sell, if he sells the club, then we'll be looking at a, a positive new year next year. <laughs> nice. Okay. Thanks, Michael. Thank you. So I'm, I'm here with Andrew. He's also from the UK, right? Hey, yep. Andrew. So, quick, quick story, how did you start going for the National Ukrainian Team Games? How did it happen? So, I've loved football my whole life. My first ever Ukraine, my first ever football match in my life was uh, England versus Ukraine in 2000, one of the last games at the old Wembley Stadium. Um, I was only four years old and I was born in Wembley, two streets away from the main stadium. And just like that, you know, I went to that game and ever since I've been, well, until I grew up to be old enough to go to on my own, away games I went to Euro 2012 in Ukraine um, and then I started going every year with my friends from the UK from the diaspora we were going to one away game a, a season so we started off going to Iceland we were going to the Euros 2020, 2016 um, we went to Czech Republic in the Nations League and then from there um, after I finished university uh, I had a few months before I stopped uh, before I started my uh, graduate job and I thought, listen, there's a gap in the market here. No one knows anything about Ukrainian football outside of Ukraine if you don't know Russian or Ukrainian, the language. So you also so, created a YouTube channel? And yeah, a uh, YouTube channel, uh, mainly a, well, a football resource on social media, a website um, where I help people and promote Ukrainian football so that they understand what's going on there. Players, go to games, cover all the Ukraine matches, um, done a lot of things for British media, global media everywhere as well, just so that they understand... Um, what's going on in Ukrainian football and ev obviously everything to do with the war as well. Okay, and uh, the last question, do you support any Do you support any football club in, in the England and if so, which club? Um, uh, I'm a Brentford fan. Brentford. Um, I wouldn't say I'm diehard, but 
it's near where I it's it's not too far from where I live um, and one of my friends had a season ticket there and he took me occasionally a few times a season in the past and now obviously since Yehor uh, Yarmuluk there Ukrainian right. I've been going even more often uh, just on my own and with my so with no, some other still, friends you're still visiting uh, Brentford again yeah right? of course absolutely um, good stuff a nice little family club but you know um, my real ride or die though is obviously the Ukraine national team ok thanks man good nice. to see you likewise So great game for Ukraine. It's 2-1. Uh, Ukraine was losing until the 86th minute, and actually, finally they won. So great, ga great game, great emotions. Uh, it's getting pretty cold. So heading back home. See you in the next episode.